powerful hurricane is moving in fast from a hundred miles at sea. In hours, it will strike land with devastating force. of a hurricane's fury, we are left completely helpless. From space, a full-grown hurricane appears as a giant pinwheel of swirling clouds. On Earth, they are the most violent and frightening of all nature's storms. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Since the 1930s, the daring work of newsreel cameramen has allowed us to glimpse the violent power of hurricanes. against our coastlines like sledgehammers. In their unpredictable rage, they lash against anything that stands in their way. The destruction to property is enormous. Their toll in human lives is massive. Centuries ago, the Indians of the Caribbean worshipped and feared a powerful sky god called Huracan. Today, the storms we call hurricanes demand an equal respect. They remain the largest, most powerful storms on Earth, and their uncontrolled fury can still inspire both awe and terror. Tuesday, August 4th, 1969. An orbiting weather satellite spots a small patch of turbulence in the mid-Atlantic. The rainstorm is one of a hundred that form every year over the ocean's tropical water. The warm sea creates funnels of air that billow up thousands of feet. The clouds gather together. The Earth's rotation gives them spin. A hurricane is born. On Thursday, August 13th, a team of Navy hurricane hunters flies directly into the storm. Hot spots on. Engineer, maintain my airspeed at 190 knots. Going down to 500 feet. Metro, keep that wind on the wing. To pierce into the tranquil eye, they fly low, barely above the water. Approaching 500 feet. Metro, steady. Level 500. Uh, Seco Metro. Request range and bearing to the eye. Starting our penetration run, RPM 2600. RPM 2600. Engineer, maintain my airspeed at 199. Aye, sir. Not a signal. Go ahead, Nico. Uh, we're approaching uh, one of the rain bands. It looks like it's uh, pretty rough. Uh, got a soft spot. Uh, recommend you come left to 150. Surface wind is slightly more than the port wing. Uh, 
degrees, 120 knots. Pressure is dropping rapidly. I read 310 to 120 knots down there. Well, that was a rough one. Finally, in the eye, instruments measure the hurricane's strength and gauge its size and speed. Temperature and wind eye. The early indications are alarming. It is a big storm and still growing. For more than a week, the storm churns across the Atlantic and into the Caribbean Sea. There she lingers, gathering strength. Her final path still unknown. The third hurricane of the season, she is named Camille. A hurricane watch goes up along the entire Gulf Coast. No one knows yet exactly where Camille will strike, but at harbors and marinas everywhere, boaters prepare for the worst. Suddenly, the message goes out. Camille has made her move. She's heading directly for the Mississippi coast. Sunday, August 16th. Advance winds hit the coastline. Everywhere, people start boarding up. More than 50,000 people take the advice to leave, to evacuate upstate and find safety inland. As the hurricane draws closer, there are those who choose to stay behind. The young, the unbelievers, the thrill seekers, the sightseers, the stubborn. By afternoon, the winds begin to roar. Camille is churning dangerously close. attempt a last-minute escape. For most, it is too late. The roads are blocked or washed away. In the drenching rain and wind, levees collapse, flooding entire towns. At dusk, the full force of the storm reaches Mississippi. Wind velocity hits 200 miles per hour. fires. Tornadoes spin off randomly, blowing homes to bits. blow. A 30-foot tidal surge smashes the coast. Miraculously, some survive. By morning, it is over. The coastline is in shambles. Entire towns are wiped away. Two hundred thousand are homeless. More than two hundred fifty are dead. Dazed, the survivors stumble out. Each in his own way measures his loss. It's bound to be in here somewhere because all these are the houses that came from in this vicinity. They're all ready in here in this neighborhood, but mine was wrapped on the corner, not on any of the That great when you under that smile. And my house was under 12 feet of water. 
and, and I've seen that if, about all my family has the head destruction of their homes. And it, and we, and I'm never, I hope I never see nothing like this again. I'm not young, but it, it takes this hard blow. And I lost my shoes and half of my clothes I had on, but the lady lent me some clothes to wear, and she lent me a pair of shoes for me to walk home with, and I'm thankful, and I did a lot of praying, and Junior, darling, we all are right, sweetheart. I love you. Now, don't worry about us. We are right, darling. And hello to all of you. Thank the Lord. Another one will never catch us here because if we hear of another one coming, we're leaving here and go way upstate like you asked Mama to do. So, okay, now I love y'all. In its sheer destructive intensity, no storm in recorded history has matched Camille. It was the greatest storm of any kind to ever affect this nation. Inevitably, there will be others. Miami, 1965. The early winds of a coming storm offered some residents an opportunity to play. The fun, however, was short-lived. Roaring quickly toward the coast was a hurricane named Betsy. It was the first to threaten eastern Florida in several years. Winds built to over 125 miles an hour. The hurricane had arrived. pushed tons of water into Miami Beach, the ground floors of houses and hotels turned into rivers and pools. Before dawn, it was over. A freighter had been tossed onto the beach, but altogether, Miami was lucky. The brunt of the hurricane had hit to the south, Miami had only been brushed. Today, weather scientists use flying laboratories to study hurricanes for their working secrets. A gust probe measures the atmosphere a split second ahead of the plane. Elaborate sensor and data systems record air motion, temperature, and humidity. Linked to airborne computers, the information can be instantly analyzed. We still lack an exact knowledge of how and why hurricanes form, but we are constantly learning more about their complex functioning. Discoveries made on experimental reconnaissance flights may someday save countless lives from the most violent storm on Earth. At the National Hurricane Center in Miami, weathermen keep constant track of storms that may reach our coasts. It is their job to warn us where and when a hurricane will strike. A huge coastal radar net is but one part of the center's hurricane detection and early warning system. A flow of weather data from satellites, ships, and remote ocean buoys is instantly analyzed for potential danger. A special hurricane teletype circuit issues immediate warnings whenever a hurricane threatens. Sudden changes in a storm's path are reported at once to those in danger. Dr. Neil Frank is director of the National Hurricane Center. He heads all hurricane detection and warning operations for the entire United States. 
Our knowledge about hurricanes has increased tremendously over the last, say, 20, 30 years. We've now got satellites that have come along in the, since the 60s. We had radar as a byproduct of World War II. Another byproduct of World War II was aircraft reconnaissance, and we started sending military airplanes out into these storms to give us uh, information about them. There's been no question about a tremendous increase in our understanding. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to realize that same understanding in our forecast accuracy, so that we're not forecasting that much better today. Miami Beach, a comfortable place in the sun that in recent years, like the rest of the coastline, has attracted large numbers of new residents. In Miami, as in nearly every other coastal city, there is a potential for hurricane disaster. A huge percentage of its population has never experienced a major hurricane. So it's been 25 years since we've experienced much activity over the state of Florida, and over 15 years since the people along the East Coast have, have experienced bad hurricanes. And that's where our greatest population increase is taking place at the present time. Now, the fear that we have is that people might become complacent. Now, in the meantime, the East Coast and even Florida has had some near misses, and we've been brushed by some, and we've had to post some warnings at times, and then the storm went someplace else, or we've gone through the fringes of some minor storms, uh, had, a, had a weak storm come by, and we've developed some false impressions. And false impressions lead to poor decisions, maybe, in the wake of the next uh, uh, hurricane that comes by that could indeed be a big one. The last major hurricane that we've had here was in 1926, a real big storm. On September 17th, Miami was devastated by a direct hit. A hurricane of unparalleled power lashed at Miami for 11 hours and left the city destroyed. Based on the damage that Miami suffered in 1926, Dr. Frank has made a projection of what would happen if such a storm struck again. Here on Key Biscayne, the large hotels and condominiums will quickly flood to the second floor. Any structures not built on pilings will be in danger of collapse. As the hurricane sweeps in, the rest of Key Biscayne will go completely underwater. Most smaller dwellings will be flooded or submerged under the churning storm. People who do not evacuate in time will have little chance for survival. In South Miami Beach, hundreds of small hotels and apartments will be smashed and flooded by tons of water. The buildings are occupied mainly by the aged and retired. It is doubtful that everyone could be evacuated. Facing directly into the path that a killer storm will take are the large and famous hotels of Miami Beach. Those that have been strongly built will survive even the biggest storm. Yet staying inside to weather it out could be a nightmare. Water from the huge tidal surge will blast through the ground floors, tearing out walls and stairways. Power will be cut off, leaving those inside trapped in darkness on the upper floors. People with medical problems will be left helpless. In the rest of Miami, flooding, Severe winds and tornadoes will damage or destroy thousands of buildings. The death toll could be enormous. Yet knowing what might happen, will Miamians evacuate if warned? Oh, well, I think I'd pretty, pay pretty much attention to the weather reports, and if I got enough warning, I'd try to leave. I don't know. I think my instinct would be to hide under a table. But I'm from New York, and I've never been in a hurricane. And I guess I'd, I'd probably want to run right out in it. Well, if they're on the water, they'll evacuate. But if they're, they know they're comfortable and nothing's going to happen, then they'll stay there and they'll 
It's a good reason to have a party. In 1969, despite numerous warnings that Hurricane Camille was on the way, 28 people gathered in a third floor hotel room to have a hurricane party. The Hotel Richelieu in Mississippi did not weather the storm. Of the 28 party goers, only one survived. An eight year old boy floated out of the third story window on a mattress. Camille in 1969, a category five type storm taught them some very bitter lessons. I hope it doesn't take that kind of a storm to teach the rest of us who live along the coastline those same kind of lessons. You know, an old philosopher once said that those who ignore history are condemned to relive it. I like that word condemned. And there's no reason today why we should have to uh, experience those same kind of bitter lessons. There's a lot of hurricane history around, and if we'll take the time, we can learn those lessons and not have to go through those same kind of experiences. The recorded history of hurricanes compels us to respect their awesome power. In 1737, hurricanes killed 300,000 near Calcutta. In 1900, more than 6,000 people died when a powerful storm swept over Galveston, Texas. In 1970, on the coast of East Pakistan, a single storm killed nearly half a million people. Today, we still know very little about how hurricanes begin and exactly what forces determine their paths. For now, at least, if threatened by their fury, we should heed the warnings of the past.